everybody. I'm here at Beluthahatchee Park. This is a piece of land and a couple of buildings left to future generations by a man named Stetson Kennedy, who was a journalist, uh, activist, uh, crusader for social justice, uh, author, and uh, at one time uh, an undercover member of the Ku Klux Klan, whose work in exposing some of their secrets led to them becoming decertified in the state of Georgia and an illegal organization. Mr. Kennedy is everywhere in this home, his spirit. This is not the house he lived in, the building I'm in. This is a house that was built by a friend of his on the property. And in some of these photos to come, I'm going to show you some of the things from around the house and his um, collections of uh, various objects and writings. And we'll have some music, a bit of a concert that I did on Sunday, April 2nd, 2023, here at the Foundation, uh, Stetson Kennedy Foundation Center. Just because you've got a few stockholders holding out their hands You think that gives you the right to do anything you want to public land Then you line up all the politicals You dot it all the eyes and cross the T's You thought of everything but one thing Overlook is me. Cause this is my land. I own it just as much as you. If I say we're gonna keep it green, that's just what we're gonna do. Just because the world is over a while, with every gadget you could buy. power that we use gives you some kind of right to rule the sky. Any smoke is drifting out over the forest just as far as you can see. You thought of everything but one thing you must have overlooked is me.
say we're gonna keep it green That's just what we're gonna do to folks here at the Stetson Kennedy Foundation for uh, inviting me and Karen and Al for doing all the volunteer work. Um, I'm here at the start of a week uh, in residency. They have a songwriter residency here. And I gotta say, it's a humbling experience to be in the uh, presence of the ghost or the uh, teachings of somebody who was so um, committed to to do the right thing for, for people. Uh, and uh, I spent a couple hours last night watching him speak on a video at a breakfast and just was really impressed by how down to earth he was and yet the importance of what he was saying. And so I started thinking, well, what can I sing today for you folks, you know? And I thought of that song because it really is true that one individual can make a major difference, um, as Stacey can be proved. And I'm kind of hoping that through the course of this week, I'll uh, uh, feel a call and write some more songs for you. Church bells ringing in the heart of town. Long lines of people with their sad clothes on. Schools are closed and the flag is low. People crying everywhere they go. I've heard many can't be moved. To hear the church bells ring They look into their neighbor's eyes And wouldn't change a thing Black limousines, flags flapping on the fenders The man who brought this on has no defenders, the whole world mourns the deed is done. Sadness sings in the candlelit town. Ah, but many can't be moved to hear the quiet sing. They look into the parent's eyes. Floats down on the breeze like an angel in the rain. Nine believers on their knees, struck silent by the pain. They'll make promises to the future. This time things are gonna change. Doesn't matter who can see it. It doesn't matter who's to blame. Still, many can't be moved to see these souls take wing. They watch the children they dress and wouldn't change a thing. tell you a little of my own uh, history, um, if I can be brief. I'm uh, from Connecticut originally, moved to Florida in 1995 to uh, look after my parents, especially my dad who had Parkinson's disease for the last few years of his life. And um, 
I had just met my wife to be not long before that, only a few months earlier. And it, it was her who said, if you want to go to Florida and look after your dad, I'll come with you. And uh, that's when I knew we had something real going on. And we got married about a year later, and I'm now a geezer dad with two kids in high school. Um, but in those intermediate years, the missing years, I spent in Greenwich Village in New York City, uh, hustling my way up through the folk club world and uh, recorded a few CDs and um, a couple of LPs and got to meet a lot of the people that I'd always admired, which was really an excellent thing. Um, but I also became a real resident of Greenwich Village. I mean, I lived directly across the street, no farther from that tree out there than uh, one of the main singer-songwriter clubs. And uh, for about five years, I was the person who ran the, the club, who booked the music for it. And it was owned by an Israeli businessman who had made a movie called I Spit on Your Grave, which if you've ever seen, I'm sorry for, for you. Um, it's a pretty awful movie. And uh, he made millions of dollars from it. Um, and opened a club and the folkies talked him into giving us the back room. And right up the street from him was a guy who ran a, a club, a famous restaurant called the Cafe Wa, that uh, was um, a comedy club and for years before that had been kind of a music performance club. Richie Havens at one time had played there many, many times. Um, but it's also a Lebanese restaurant. And the gentleman who owns it is from Beirut. And these two guys were next door neighbors to each other practically, one from Tel Aviv and one from Beirut. And they became friends and, and started eating lunch together every day. And after they'd been doing that for a while, they moved their table out onto the sidewalk so that all the rest of us could see them yell at each other all through lunch. <laughs> I guess that's what inspired this song, which is called Two Americans. When I lived in New York City, I worked for a man from Tel Aviv. He ate lunch every day with Ali, and run the cafe up the street. Ali came from Melanoma. They sit there for just an hour Stand there, wave their hands and shout Say okay, see you tomorrow Now the man from Tel Aviv said Maybe they should just let the Israeli army Go in and clean out everyone In Lebanon is got a gun And the man from Beirut said oh really Look at the man who's really stealing Now you want to make us haunted I thought peace was what you wanted Picture to the Americans In the land of the free Free to speak their minds Free to disagree Just like you and me Do want peace, said the man from Israel. That's why we're doing what we're doing. And the man from Beirut said, It's not a pity, you can't have peace and still keep shooting. And they drank coffee, shared a pastry, citizens of Paradise country. Checked the papers for their portfolios, said, Okay, see you tomorrow. I asked my boss, How can you stand to eat lunch every day with this man?
see what you want to see You say we gotta go kill them there Or they're gonna come and kill us here Well, I don't have to fight And if I were you, I would get wise Oh, since you've already made your mind up I hope you can get it back on life Picture two Americans in the land down here to do the uh, writer's project in the 1930s. Um, there were, of course, a lot of people around the country who opposed the whole idea of a writer's project. Uh, possibly because they were actually giving voice to, uh, deliberately to a lot of the people who had no voice previously, which included people in prison, sharecroppers, um, all kinds of people. And, Many of them uh, African American, of course, um, and uh, this was a particular goal of a lot of the writers, and I'm sure one of Setson's goals too. Uh, and he, he talked about how one time Eleanor Roosevelt came down here and discovered that uh, from the 1930 census that because so many people had no indoor plumbing, they walked out to the outhouse barefoot. Most of them were barefoot. And got hookworm. And she said, and, and um, being who she was, she said that if they could just get the money together to get shoes on everybody, that it would cut the incidence of hookworm down dramatically and people would be able to work and provide for themselves. And all the newspapers in the area denounced her for this and said, oh no, these people, they prefer being barefoot, you know walking on the good earth. And I'm sure there are people that prefer being barefoot, but maybe not when you go to the outhouse. Well, how about you guys sing one with me? Here's a real simple song. Sitting and watching that evening sun go down. That's all you gotta do. One line. Sitting and watching that evening sun go down. That's it. That's all there is to the song. It's nothing else. It's an instrument. <laughs> Sitting and watching that evening sun go down. Black haired man leaning on the fence. Local people say it don't make no sense. Sitting and watching that evening sun go down. Sitting and munching on a piece of grass. Watching them local folks walking past. Sitting and watching that evening sun go down. Now the local fella says I should've known. We got a black haired man leading by the road. Sitting and watching that evening sun go down. Hey, black haired man, but who's okay? Are you just sitting there munching that hay? Sitting and watching that evening sun go down. Now the black haired man says, You talking to me? I work for the department of scenery. Sitting and watching that evening sun go down. And every day when that sky gets clear, I get $25 for sitting right here. Sitting and watching that evening sun go down. Now 
the local fella says, I do declare we got a slap one sitting right over there. Sitting and watching that evening sun go down. You know, smart ones have been known to disappear. You don't see them leave, but they ain't around here. Sitting and watching that evening sun go down. And the black haired man says, That's for me. I'll go where I like, gotta do as I please. Sitting and watching that evening sun go down. Now, mister, I got me a job to do. If you don't mind, I'd like to get back to sitting and watching that evening sun go down. This is Stetson Kennedy's former house, the house where he actually lived in with his wife, Joyce. Just about, uh, I don't know, 50 yards from the other house, so we're gonna walk down the hill. I'm here with Karen, his granddaughter. Hi, Karen. Hey, is anybody listening? Are you all alone, wherever it is you are? You know, I'm just sick of me thinking. Or maybe I'm just wishing on a star. And if there's somebody out there who can recognize a single word I say, I'd like to ask a simple blessing for all of us while we're on the way. It's a simple prayer, sing it everywhere, heal the world. Come on, Johnny. Heal the world, heal the world. It's a simple prayer, sing it everywhere, heal the world. And we don't need another mountain. We don't need someone to lead us to the light. We just need to learn to live together And I believe the rest will turn out alright Feel the world, feel the world It's a simple prayer, sing it everywhere
salvation I only need you She will rise up with you her loved ones Yes, we're beginning to see that it's true is kind of intimate and friendly, whereas the room at the other house I'm in is like more like an assembly room, of course. Yes, and, and most people do notice that right away. Yeah. But this was just our family home, and when he married my mom, he inherited myself and my three sisters. Uh -huh. Two of my sisters were already out on their own. Well, see, so you're not, he's your stepdad. Mm-hmm. Okay. But myself and my younger sister lived here. Mm -hmm. And those are his swamp critters. He loved to walk along the water's edge and collect driftwood. Ah. And then he would get the eyes and put the eyes in and make different, he <laughs> called them critters, <laughs> swamp critters. You could probably put that on a hook and, you know, catch like something really big with it. <laughs> And of course, the colored bottles. He called it poor man's stained glass. Did he find those mostly? Um, found and purchased. Mm -hmm. Stud you look around and you'll see something new every time you come here. He was the ultimate shopper. He loved to shop. If he saw something and he liked it and he had the money, he bought it. And then found a place to put it. <laughs> the punch bowl at my mom and Stetson's wedding. Oh my gosh. And then he had the hole drilled in, and so it was our sink. And the bathtub is what galvanized metal with a wooden rim around it. Brass and, and oak. Hey, if I were you, I'd lay those weapons down. Go home to your pastor, your minister, your priest Your wife, your kids, your dealer Your television, or at least Seek forgiveness for the harm you've done Hey, what did you think was gonna happen? It ain't no chance your fantasies will come true Find yourself and your friends in a shootout with people all dressed in blue. Is that really why you came to get patriots a bad name? You shut the hell up, set the man in the center. What are you, some kind of wise ass? No, just a concerned citizen. They all stood there in silence. 
In the distance they heard sirens Forget how you came to your patriots a bad name. Hey, don't forget how you came to your patriots a bad name. It's one thing to write about, you know, famous people, and easy to do. You know, you can write it in a certain way. You can write a song about Marilyn Monroe, or or a president, you know, whether you like him or not. You know, very simply. But some of the most uh, memorable things that I've, I've ever heard in my life were stories of people that are pretty much forgotten over time. I have uh, at least uh, half a dozen of these songs through the years. And um, this is one of them. Um, this is a story of a real man. His name was John King. And he, he uh, was a maker of silverware in England as a young man, studied as an apprentice. And being ambitious, decided to see if he could sell his wares through a shop in London and ended up in prison in Tasmania as a result. My name is John King, from Liverpool I came down to London in the spring for to make my name. Or I had learned to work the silver, I'd have been the blade. I was carrying a symbol of the finest I had made. I went into a London shop of fine cutlery and showed the man my handiwork. He just stared at me and called for a policeman to do me the did say. This man's a thief, he stole this man, please take him away. The judge said, son, he stole that knife right up off the shelf. Says I to the judge, sir, I made that blade myself. But I have no money, be a man of worth. He sent me to Van Diemen's land, the bottom of the earth. We sailed out on the foamy sea, never to return home. We're not to do the simple road, chain that we've been born. Then sit in our own followers, starving to our deaths. Till we arrived in Hobart Town, the letter of us left. Seven years was 
Terry Williams song. Hey, if you know who was governor a hundred years ago, he stood up for our freedom. Don't you know? You wouldn't have to get vaccinated and let me just say it's a shame we don't have smallpox today. It's a shame we don't have smallpox today. There was no one with the courage to stand in the way when we all got vaccinated and the disease went away. Now it's a shame we don't have smallpox today. Let's just sing along. Let's pay tribute to the wisdom and intentions of the man who sues the feds on behalf of all the parents of the land. So your six-year-old can go to school and sneeze all around And not have to wear a mask or get a needle in the arm It's a shame we don't have small parts today There was no one with the courage to stand in the way When they all got vaccinated and the disease went away It's a shame we don't have small parts today The governor stands for freedom, we can all agree. His freedom to tell the schools they can't teach what they please. His freedom to tell employers they can't protect their employees from protecting their workplace from infectious disease. And his freedom to tell the health department they can't count the dead. And his freedom to hire a health inspector who's out of his head. And his freedom to tell the voters all the ways their votes are gone. And his freedom to tell the women their bodies aren't their own. And his freedom to tell the cities they can't pass their own laws. His freedom to tell the legislature the maps they can't draw. Unless they guarantee him victory and just in case that smells. His freedom to fire everybody and count the votes himself. And it's a machine we don't have small Hi, everybody. I'd like to say thank you to the Stetson Kennedy Foundation for making me so welcome here and offering me the opportunity to have this wonderful experience of staying here at Beluth Hatchie Park this week. And yes, I did write a couple songs while I was here. Here's one of them. Hey there, Stetson Kennedy, I'm here in your home Reading and thinking about you wherever you roam You had a need for justice, not for yourself, but for the ones Who were dragged in chains to America, their daughters and their sons Join the Writer's Project in the Great Depression years Documenting the lives of so many who'd virtually disappear Prisoners, sharecroppers, singers who roamed the land Collecting the old folk wisdom passed down from hand to hand You rode with the night riders Till you memorized the names 
of the murderers and the hangmen who brought us all such shame. They'd have killed you in a heartbeat if they'd only known your stories and your witness brought the night riders down. Hey, Stetson Kennedy, you'd love it here, I know. There's a big old tortoise lying in the sun down below. And a bird was drowning out my song, so I stopped to hear his tune. Where the quiet water makes a perfect Reflection of the moon Well, I'm leaving tomorrow But still I would say Though we never met Thank you anyway I remember you well In the time I did stay here with your spirit that walks on this land. Thanks so much, everybody. I hope I'll see you soon. Bye.